Hi everyone, I'm Senator Mark Maynard of the 6th District and I have with me here Dr. Brian Holmes and I attended a meeting last night for the Country Roads Coalition, a group that fights for land access and just does great things for West Virginia. Where are we at here, Brian? We're in Gladwin, West Virginia today along the dry fork of the Cheat River uh, where it's been brought to my attention that uh, Tread Lightly was wanting to do a uh, cleanup project and so we're out here to scout some of the um, issues that they have uh, that they're working to try to resolve um, here in the state of West Virginia and uh, we were able to come out and scout and look and uh, we were able to find some of the uh, evidence of the damages that uh, the Tread Lightly would like to resolve. But it doesn't look too bad and I think when you report back to Tread Lightly uh, they'll be pleased to know that it's you know not really significant um, so that's that's good. Um, to start with, so the meeting last night, there was many issues, and these aren't in any order of importance, uh, but one thing that came up with is county roads that have been moved because of timbering or mining and moved to a different location, and the old location of the road is no longer there and no way to be passable, but then the new road is on private property, and they're gating it, and so therefore denying total access of what a road used to be. Uh, Brian, tell us a little bit about Silver Run in Work County. So in Work County, there's a road called Silver Run. Um, this is a road that I know that uh, Jerry Bain has made people uh, aware of. And so what had happened there um, is that we had a county road uh, that you know went up the hill, and uh, at some point the pulp and paper company uh, decided that it wasn't optimal for their haul road, and so they had actually built a road um, and uh, graded under the county road and then we started utilizing that as the county road. And it's my understanding that there may have even been some county maintenance that has occurred in the past on that road. Um, and then with the prospect or the, with the um, acquisition of new, uh, from new property owners, there's now been placed a gate there. So a county road that's actually on the current county road map is actually grown up with trees and is turned under a roadbed that was created by a private entity. So, I'm gonna let the Blue Ribbon Coalition know about this. They kind of fight for public land access and keeping roads open, and I need to do a better job. I'm a board member there, and I'm gonna start reporting to them on those things. And also across the state, especially in my district in McDowell County, there's gates popping up on public roads or roads that's been used for 10 years or more by the public, thinking they're public roads. And also I think check into the fact that state money has been paid to maintain these roads. That may have one time been some type of timber road or uh, mining road, but you know when you're when they're used for the public, if I'm not mistaken, in state code for 10 years or more, it becomes a public road. So we're going to check into that. Um, last week, a little update on the legislature. I met with the DOH and gave them issues that we've been uh, confronted with, and I plan on calling them out and sending a list to them tomorrow and meeting with them later this week and let them give us their uh, solutions to these problems. And the same goes for the DNR. I met with them last Wednesday, told them issues. Both organizations seem very friendly and easy to work with, and we can't, we, we got a lot of solutions uh, uh, from last week's meeting, but uh, there's still more to do. Um, one of the things that we talked about last night, and I wanna mention uh, Marcus Yonker, who was there in person at the conference, and then also Thomas Burton, and Nico Bowden were there via conference, and we talked about all these issues we're gonna be discussing with you today here. Um, one of the things we talked about was disabled access to state property. You know, if a disabled hunter, um, he can only get to like what's really close to a public road. He has no access into the depths, which many of us take for granted, and we're gonna to fight to see that they have motorized access for hunting. And then also um, between the uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day, they don't have access either. They can't get in there like we can, walk around and, and do wildlife viewing. And I would like to see the disabled have that. And I'm gonna check into the ADA compliance. I, I would, it would be terrible you know, if we are not allowing them access and it's not ADA compliant. I worked with Tyler Browning and Eddie Lawson from Logan County a few years ago, and they were wanting to get motorized access for disabled hunters. So I'm gonna uh, ring their phone and tell them what we're trying to do and maybe get them on board. They had a nice coalition going down there. Um, we're uh, gonna 
make legislative priorities. We decided, actually, it's Brian's idea for the uh, Country Roads Coalition, and I'll help them with that, and uh, we'll get that to you when we when we get the list out. Um, it's not on my list at this point, but we want to tell you about uh, Adventure Travel Day at the Capitol on February 17th. And we're going to try to have these legislative priorities made up and with a list before Adventure Travel Day. So please come there. Um, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. on February 16th, which is the day before Adventure Travel Day, all the off-road enthusiasts and adventure travel uh, people are meeting at Recovery uh, Sports restaurant, which is kind of inside the Four Point Sheraton Hotel uh, near Canal Boulevard in in Charleston. And so it's going to be kind of like a welcoming meeting, a little meet and greet for the exhibitors that are coming to Adventure Travel Day in the capital. Um, Four Points Sheraton is the host hotel for West Virginia Adventure Travel Day. Exhibitors need to be in the capital between 730 and nine to set up their booth in both the House and the Senate rotundas, as well as the Senate rotundas. Um, we have enough accommodation for up to 60 exhibitors. Tables, three by six tables and chairs are provided. So all you have to do is bring in your little signage and your paraphernalia for your organization. If you have something to do with power sports, even waterway trails, mountain biking, equestrian, please join us for Adventure Travel Day. Again, that's February 17th, mark it on your calendar. Come to the Senate, the uh, the House, be our guest during the floor session. And then also that day at 1 p.m., uh, all the exhibitors are meeting for a meet and greet in the Governor's Cabinet Conference Room. And we're going to talk and meet some of the professionals. Uh, Tread Lightly Representative uh, Scott Ammerman is going to be there. Uh, ben Burr, the Executive Director of Blue Ribbon Coalition that uh, fights for public land access and many other uh, dignitaries of our world is gonna be there. Um, we're gonna check into, oh, let me add one more thing to that, Adventure Travel Day, Brian. Uh, Jerry Bain is gonna have a overlanding experience at uh, some property that's privately owned by Eric Larch. And uh, it's a beautiful uh, level ground that's mowed off and it kind of overlooks Shillian, just not too far away from the capital. So we're hoping everybody, whether, uh, if the weather's, if it's rain, sleet, or snowing, we're gonna be there. So uh, be with us at the Capitol. And after we have uh, our meet and greet there, we'll head toward Eric's uh, place for a Friday night uh, overlanding. We'll have a campfire. Eric usually has us with wood. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure he gets us some firewood up there. And just great uh, uh, progress is made when we mm -hmm. sit around the campfire and talk about what we can do for this state and Absolutely. what our love of the sport is. When the best thinking is done. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, I don't think, what were you going to say, Brian? Um, so we also have some exhibitors uh, that will have some rigs on site there at the Capitol on Adventure Travel Days. And so we've got uh, Jason Speck from Main Mountain State Overland, who's going to have one of his uh, really unique and spectacular rigs there for you Probably to like a $100,000 Toyota, like yeah, fully equipped. He can like live for months in the thing. <laughs> it's traveled all over the United States. Um, we've also got uh, our uh, own Eric Larch from Mountain Maid. Uh, he's going to have a uh, so side by side for display, um, which has actually been converted to an SPV. So, this is one of the plated side by sides, and he can talk to you about the process that uh, goes on to make one of these side by side street legal. We're also going to have James Wright there. James is going to, uh, he's from the Fairmont Dual Sport uh, Riders, and he's going to come down and bring some adventure bikes and dual sport bikes for people to check out and kind of see what that's about. And uh, he'd be more than willing to talk to you about the, the opportunities in the state for traveling on uh, two wheels. Uh, we're also going to have Fox Creek on our buddy Zach Adams, and he will have an overland rig for display. And also Infamous Adventures will be there with the Jerry Bain built Manchi truck. Tell us a little bit about your what you're doing with uh, your adventure routes. So uh, Infamous Adventures is a um, uh, basically a route development um, and mapping company that I have created. And really the point is, is to try to promote um, small businesses and uh, small communities that need help uh, from adventure tourists like you uh, to be able to frequent their areas and to support their small local businesses. And so I create routes and host them on my website, um, www.infamousadvroutes.com. And uh, so there's uh, routes there that are free for download and they uh, bring you to different areas that are pretty rural 
and uh, some of them you know, need your help as far as uh, spending your hard-earned dollars to support their small local economies. If the uh, viewers could Google IMAT, would that bring them to you? Yes, the IMAT trail system is one of my signature trails. It was featured in Roadrunner Magazine a couple years ago. And um, if you Google uh, Infamous Adventures or IMAT, uh, trail system, either one probably should find you, find me on Google. Mm -hmm. And that's I-M-A-T, in case you viewers have a hard time understanding that. Uh, one thing I brought up last night, and it's not something we've ever got involved with, but uh, I think jet skis and small watercraft accessibility probably could be looked at on streams and rivers and creeks and uh, maybe horsepower limits looked into, and I don't want to make anyone cringe, but uh, maybe a trial basis or something to just for an area that's underused or unused, something just to kind of stimulate the economy and get people out of their house. And, you know, I can imagine, I don't know how, if it's even legal or not in certain creeks and streams to have a jet ski, but I know I can personally uh, envision how much fun it would be to have a jet ski there. So I'm gonna check into that and I'm not really sure what the DNR will say about that, but we'll find out. Um, also, uh, the Country Roads Coalition is gonna check into the road abandonment appeal process. I was told last week that there's no statute of limitations on that from the DOH. So if there's a road that's been abandoned in your area that you feel like was was unjust, uh, we're going to check into the appeal process and see what you have to do uh, to appeal the, to appeal the uh, decision. Um, we're working on e-bike legislation. Uh, West Virginia's kind of fell behind. I got some uh, legislation passed by the governor few years back that kind of identified them, allowed them on state lands, but we still have some more steps to do and we're working on that. Um, we're gonna start working with the counties. Brian has been doing that a little bit. These counties are hungry to get people to their counties and cities, and we're gonna work with them and help them with their roads uh, in their local area. Brian, would you wanna say anything about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, so I've talked to a couple of different counties that have all had uh, interest in trying to develop uh, some form of um, a county road series uh, route which would try to take them, um, any adventurer on a uh, route that would pass through their towns and their small communities, highlighting uh, points of interest and small businesses that uh, need promotion. And um, so there's multiple counties that are interested in doing this. And uh, it would be something that would be able to be hosted online um, and typically used as like a GPX file or uh, a GeoTIF uh, that might be utilized with a Venza or something along those lines. Uh, but there's been a lot of interest in that, and I know that a lot of counties have so much to offer, and it's really exciting to be able to get out and start talking to some of these people and seeing uh, what they have in their areas. And a lot of, uh, a lot of these uh, counties just have amazing hidden gems uh, that hopefully we're able to um, preserve through actions like this. Ron, I'd like to invite some of the county commissioners to our Adventure Travel Day to let them know what world really exists for some of them don't. Sounds like some of the ones you've been talking to are already kind of, it's on their radar. Mm -hmm. I think a state agency, it's just a little bit of a, a headache for them to deal with this, but these counties want people to come to their county because yes. they know the economic benefit for their local businesses mm -hmm. and, and things. So that's, that's great. Um, I've been, we've been hit up with carbon credit issues for a while now, and we've known about it, but it's recently kind of being talked about at the Capitol in our uh, post audits report, they talked about there's 600,000 acres of property in West Virginia that are being used for carbon credits. And that pretty much puts it off limit for anybody. And so we're checking into that and we'll let you know uh, when we come up with uh, some more information on that. Um, working on SPV access to state parks. Now, of course, not on any property, but just access to the uh, gift shop and the parking lot, these SPVs, you know, they go to the um, DMV, they pay their fees, they get insurance on it, and then they come to these state parks to, um, you know, enjoy the tourism opportunities at these state parks. You just park in the parking lot, walk the hiking trails. They're not allowed to currently. Not statewide, but uh, slowly but surely, there's more and more state parks that aren't allowing these SPVs to park in their parking lot. And that even includes uh, some full-size rigs. Mm -hmm. Like if Brian's uh, rig here had some issues that it wouldn't technically be street legal to drive across the state on interstates and stuff, he could get a SPV license and sticker on this rig. But if he did that, he wouldn't be allowed to drive his Jeep Comanche to the state parks and park in the parking lot and go into the gift shop. Right, Brian? We didn't even that's talk right. about that in our meeting mm -hmm. last night, yeah. but you Absolutely. know that's something that's being fake, uh, affected. Um, 
so some more legislation we was talking about. West Virginia Overland came to me with overland guided tour uh, legislation that kind of would promote overland tours here in West Virginia and not really regulate it, but just give a guideline to kind of put West Virginia on the map and say, hey, come to West Virginia, do an overland tour. And with if we make that happen, there's lots of other things we need to do. Um, I don't even have it in my list here, but we're talking about dispersed camping. Mm -hmm. Dispersed camping is legal on federal land in West Virginia, but on zero state land. I think it's like 1.5 million acres. You cannot disperse camp. Many other states do it. Um, there needs to be limitations on it because we don't want somebody coming here and camping out for a year. And you know, there's you know, no uh, side by sides, no ATVs, no RVs. Just somebody that's overlanding, basically give them a place to camp because they don't like to go in a campground and be parked next to this million dollar Prevo motorhome. They want to be out on this scenic bluff with a wake up to a morning view all by themselves or with fellow uh, adventure travelers and cook out of the back of their Jeep and climb out of the top of the rooftop tent on their Jeep. You know, just so many opportunities. Um, and thank you all for, for joining us today and listening to this. And we're gonna keep you updated more. Remember that February 17th is Adventure Travel Day in the Capitol. The public is welcome to come up, visit. You know, Brian will have a booth there and you can find out all about what he's doing with trails as well as all the other people. There'll be power sports people, waterway trails, you know, e-bike people, and uh, many state agencies will be set up there as well too. I, I think we're, Jerry was trying to get the national park there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we appreciate it, Brian. Why don't you wrap it up? Well, it's been a good weekend. We've made a lot of progress and we've learned a lot of things. And we'd like to thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you there. It's starting to rain now, so <laughs> wrapping up is perfect. So, yes, see you guys.